CNN FM, the financial network. Nick Abson had an established career in the television business until he fell in love on the job. Being in TV, you have a, a kind of a glorified life, and it's great fun, and you, you work with wonderful people. Um, what I thought was it was necessary to put something back. And when I saw this technology, and more importantly, when I saw the potential of this technology disappearing, I thought I had to act. I felt I had to act, and I did. And coming up, an engine designed for space flight and a CEO that wants to put it in your car. The future may not be so far away. That's next on Business Unusual. Welcome back to Business Unusual. Journalists are often warned not to allow themselves to get too close to a story. But for my guest, the advice fell on deaf ears. A director of the British science TV program, Nick Abson, was introduced to a novel technology developed for the European space program. So taken with the technological's potential, he says he had no choice but to buy the company. Joining me now is Nick Abson, founder and CEO of Zevco and uh, welcome to the program. Thank you very much. I think it was spelled wrong on there, but um, Zevco has a meaning, doesn't it? It's not it, just a name out of the blue. It does indeed. It's the zero emission vehicle company. And what we do is we produce a system that provides power to cars, but totally emission free. Now you were a legitimate journalist. You were a television director and producer. That good, solid, nice paying job. It was a lovely job. Yeah, and, had it, and then you went to this, whatever you're doing now. Mm. How did you do that? Well, what happened was, was that, you know, being in TV, you have a, a kind of a glorified life, and it's great fun, and you, you work with wonderful people. Um, what I thought was it was necessary to put something back. And when I saw this technology, and more importantly, when I saw the potential of this technology disappearing, I thought I had to act. I felt I had to act, and I did. Disappearing because? Well, it was, uh, it was basically for the space uh, industry in, in Europe. And it was about to disappear because the funding was dropped uh, by the European Space Agency. So as a consequence, a lot of very, very fine scientists and engineers were about to find themselves on the job market. You know, for years, the rebuke to all the critics who said this is a waste of money going into space we heard that no in fact because there's going to be so much that will come back to to those of us who have to live on this planet and that we will reap the rewards of all this research and technology that has been developed for the space programs and that wasn't necessarily the case was it? well that's right the the interesting thing about this was that had it been lost we would not have the ability now to be able to produce very inexpensive systems for producing energy for vehicles in fact energy not just for vehicles electrical energy for vehicles mm -hmm but also electrical energies for houses, for desalination, for instance, and also for, the, for powering remote areas. This technology is absolutely crucial to the next phase of energy development in, in the world. It must have occurred to you that, that this is a no-brainer. You know, it's developed, it's already there, and it's cheaper? Absolutely. Why is it not being more mass produced then? Well, uh, this was the interesting thing about this particular company. They had learned how to manufacture this technology and previously it had been made by guys in labs. And they actually decided that they wanted to make it very cheaply. They developed a manufacturing system, a process manufacturing system. If I say it's like making biscuits, people at home will maybe understand a bit. It's absolutely... You uh, have a very intelligent audience. It's, it's, it's say pressing fuel cells. Fuel cells. It's pressing, pressing the materials into fuel cells, and they literally come out like biscuits. And frankly, it's so cheap. It, in the future, it will be considerably cheaper than internal combustion engines. So like I am doing this interview with you, I could now go out and be so enthralled with this idea that I could also pursue this. This is how you got into it, really. Absolutely. Well. But I know how much television producers and directors make, and they don't have money to fund these things. Uh, well, this is true. I had to go and I had to go and rattle the change from a couple of people's pockets. Um, the the, the hmm. people who were principally uh, helpful were curiously those people who you would think to be most conservative, but. Um, uh, stranger things in life have happened, and we were supported very, uh, very courageously by C. Evelyn de Rothschild, who was the chairman of Rothschild's bank. Now, he was a man who was very him? courageous. Well, 
it, it was very curious. He had seen an article written about us in an in-flight magazine in, uh, in an airline. And uh, um, we were right in the middle of buying the comp this uh, Belgian company. We didn't have enough money. And I got a phone call on my mobile that said, I understand you need some money. Where do you want it? And that was it. Oh. And I said, wait a minute, we haven't done a deal. And I said, I'm sure that you're a very busy man. When you get a chance, just write me a letter. And what, what sum of money was he talking about? Oh, I, I can't divulge that. But it wasn't uh -huh. an enormous amount, but it was enough. It was enough. To get you off the ground. And it always was enough. Now, tell me what you see, what your vision is for, this, for these fuel cells and this kind of clean energy. Well, the, f the first thing and the most important thing is mm. it, it frees hydrogen as a fuel. So you can use hydrogen as a fuel. Uh, hydrogen is an enormously valuable fuel. It's very cheap to manufacture. You can make it out of organic waste, for example, which means in the city of New York, a, a study was done by Princeton University where the city of New York could provide 80%, for, sorry, 40% of the total vehicle miles in hydrogen at a negative cost. In other words, less they could pay you to take it away. Hmm. So here we freed this very clean fuel that solves all kinds of pollution problems in its manufacture, and then you put it into fuel cells and make it generate electricity, again, cleanly. And the practical applications are not just for our cars that you might think about, no, but what else? Well, in principle, you have two or three very important uses. First of all, marine, for marine applications, for, for running uh, boats um, of all sizes, including very large boats. But the, the, perhaps the most interesting application is for desalination plants. You know, the world is running out of water, mm -hmm. and uh, fuel cells can generate water at a very low cost. And we have a, a, a joint venture partner in the USA called PTC uh, who uh, are going to start manufacturing large-scale desalination plants using our fuel cells. How close are you? So, oh, sorry. Well, uh, uh, we are... If you consider that we'll be using them in vehicles in the next two to three years in large numbers, then we are talking about five, six years before... What would this cost a consumer to buy? These would be a prototype vehicle, of course. But what are we talking about in terms of... Uh, uh, in terms of cost, to the, uh, in terms of cost mm. to the consumer, uh, to differentiate between commercial users and the, the, the man in the street, commercial users it don't, actually won't cost them anything. Now, it's price neutral, it's cost neutral in terms of the total value of a vehicle. For the consumer... Cost neutral you know, means? Means that it costs the same as uh, a whatever diesel you would buy or for whatever. The car. But, but why, I mean, I have to ask, why doesn't Detroit jump on something like this? Well, Detroit has a very nice business making internal combustion engines. They will take on fuel cells, but not at the pace that they can be taken on. They'll take it on slowly, uh, and they'll gen gradually introduce them uh, into, uh, into their own vehicles. But they're not using our technology. Our technology is unique because it doesn't use strategic materials. In other words, it's not limited. And what Detroit would like to do is limit the amount of fuel cells. Are you looking for a partner then to build your own automobiles? And we, we in fact have a, uh, uh, we're developing a relationship with a company in New York to retrofit existing vehicles, which we think is a marvelous idea because it means that they suddenly become valuable. All right, well, you've got to come back and tell us how this uh, project of yours is going. Well, we'll bring one back in a, in a Please vehicle. Please do, we'll drive it. Nick Absen, thank you so much for joining us from uh, Zevco. And thank you very much.